It's leaking right now, but it's leaking very slowly. It looked like we peed on it. It was just like the stain that just kept growing. And I'm like, oh my God, it looks like somebody. Because we're refilling it with urine. Just ignore the stain on the table. Just for the record, we did not pee in this. This is distilled water. Oh, what's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to a modern nation. This is gonna be port, port. This is gonna be port. This is gonna be port four and five. This is gonna be part four and five of the bubble wall PC build work vlog. Build work, work. where is my English? <laughs> So part four and five, I finished the column assembly. We tested out an old fan controller to make sure that it would indeed work with one of the pumps. I then soldered two pumps together to every channel of the fan controller and tested it out to make sure the noise wasn't a problem. And finally, I did a little bit of case modification by removing the PSU shroud in order to make room for the pumps and fan controller assembly. You're gonna notice that these vlogs get a lot longer towards the end and I get a lot more frantic as my days grow longer. Brace yourself, this is gonna be a long video, but I hope you enjoy. Hey, what's going on everyone and good morning. This is vlog day number four. So last time off camera, I drilled a bunch of holes into one inch pieces of acrylic, which took me forever. I wanna do that again. Um, but now today I'm gonna to be gluing the barbs into the holes. These are gonna serve as the bases for each of the columns of water. I'm also gonna be doing a test with the fan controller to see if this is gonna be a viable solution for controlling the pumps. So let's get to it. All right, so we got our pieces in here. Turn the mic facing my mouth. Okay, a little bit louder. So we'll go ahead and pour these out. So these are the acrylic pieces I drilled. They've got the holes in here. They should be large enough. <laughs> They're supposed to be large enough to fit these barbs here. Oh, there we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just glue right there. For the glue, of course, I'm gonna be using I'm gonna be using this acrylic adhesive. Ooh, that burns my eyes. Oof. Let's go ahead and get to gluing. I wanna show off this makeshift drying rack I made. So that way when they're dry, I can just put them like that. That way they're dry, they don't lean kind of left or right and kind of fall off like that. It kind of just holds them in place. I chose polycarbonate for the, the barbs because they're gonna stick to the acrylic better. The other form of the barbs, according to Jay Summit, don't adhere very well with this type of adhesive here. I'm just kind of taking his word on it since he's done this before and I have not. Also, you don't wanna leave any adhesive inside of this bottle because it will evaporate and you'll lose adhesive and this stuff's expensive, so don't do it. Yeah, drawing rack number two. Now doubly reinforced. All right, and let's keep going. Also, you probably wanna use gloves for this part. I'm not, but you probably want to. Kind of when this adhesive gets on your fingers, it kind of produces this cooling sensation similar to um, acetone. I actually had to think about that for a second. What chemical gets cold when you touch it? Acetone. Acetone also vaporizes pretty quickly. There's a fact for you. I bet you didn't know about acetone. All right, so I've got three left over and three of these left over. All right, so let's take a look at the fan controller. This is the Rio Smart 6 fan controller from Sunbeam Tech. Um, as you can see, it has six channels. It's about 30 watts per channel. You can program it for PWM mode or manual mode. We're more interested in manual control because we're going to be using this to control the pumps. So this fan controller is from a previous build that I did maybe about seven years ago. Uh, I was using this to control some 
scythe fans that were attached to a radiator and that build has been decommissioned i don't use it anymore so i had no need for this it's been sitting in my closet and i thought maybe i can use this to control some pumps so let's find out if that will work okay let's go ahead and take it out of the box i guess this is kind of an impromptu unboxing this is the Rio Smart 6 fan controller. Basically shows you all the stuff you get. Okay, so we'll take it out and this is essentially it. You've got your six dials here and you can change PWM mode on and off. We got some heat sinks for the transistors, which get really hot. We've got Molex support for power and then each individual fan header. Uh, this one is a dedicated PWM. Probably, if I can, to try and control two pumps from each header. And yeah, it's got a nice little foam cushion on the bottom. Just make sure the metal contacts don't get grounded. And we get some, like, you know, accessories. Typical stuff that you would get in a fan controller. All right, and we're back. I had to go get a uh, power supply for this fan controller. Got some exotic tech here on the table. This is a, I don't know if you can see that. This is a Solitech. Tech. Bet you never heard of that brand before. Uh, Solitech Tech power supply, and I'm gonna show you guys how to jump it. This will be like a really quick how-to. So I got some staples here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these wire cutters and just pull one of the staples off. There we go. So you got your staple like so. What we're gonna do is just bend it. So you wanna try to bend the legs out first. I'm actually gonna do it without the, the tool. You're talking about I am the tool. <laughs> there we go. See, it's bent in really close like that. I know it's hard to see. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna short two of the pins on the 12 pin connector of the power supply and that should turn the power supply on without us having to connect a whole system. Make sure the switch is switched on, which uh, I already checked and it should be on. And we're gonna short pins four and five and we should see the light turn on in here. Uh, you guys can see it. So the light turns blue and the fan is spinning so we know that this is powered. So we got our Molex connector here. We're gonna go ahead and plug the Molex in. Remember it's directional, so. And our panel lit up, which is a good sign. Go ahead and turn that one on. So now it should be all under manual control because all of these lights are green. So here I've got a thermal take fan. We're gonna plug it in and try it out. We'll try turning it on. And of course, because it doesn't respond until you hit a higher voltage, um, it's not gonna start spinning. But hopefully with these pumps, which can go all the way down to three volts, from what I've read, we should be able to get uh, at least some pumping action going. <laughs> Ladies, get some pumping action going at a lower voltage. All right, so guys, I found this uh, fan extension here. Uh, it's got a red and a black. Uh, we're gonna use this to try to power the motor. Just need to get this end spliced and soldered on. All right, so here we're just gonna add some solder to the contact terminals of the motor. Time to solder in these wires. Start with the positive terminal. Doesn't have to be neat or pretty, it just has to work. Got this all soldered together. Let's plug the motor in and see how it works. We'll go ahead and start increasing the voltage. Ooh. Now let's see how this works with the entire assembly. All right, let's add the water. Let's turn it on. So you can go fast.
slow it down a little bit. Probably about as slow as I can go. You might notice that there's a little bit of a leak here and that is okay because this is just the prototype. Um, now we know that the concept works. It's fully adjustable. I would say right about there is probably three volts. So that's slow mode. That's about as slow as it'll go. That's medium mode. That's about six volts probably. And that is the full 12 volts. Hey, what's going on guys? Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to vlog number five. I, I think it's vlog number five, I'm not sure. Uh, so today we're going to, let me just reach over here. So I let these things dry. Uh, these are the barbs in the one inch acrylic. Uh, they've been sitting now for about 48 hours, so they should be completely dry. On the outside, I'm just gonna fill around, not that, that's the outside. I'm gonna fill this outside here with some hot glue just kind of seal in any spots where water can get through. And then we're gonna be attaching these to the, um, these uh, square columns that are gonna be filled with water. And then after that, I'm gonna do some uh, more soldering. I need to procure some uh, three pin fan connectors to wire to these pumps. I'm gonna be wiring one fan connector to two pumps and I need to test that the fan controllers have enough energy to be able to push two pumps simultaneously. So we'll be doing tests on that. Well, let's see how it goes. Whatever glue is still stuck on here when it dries, I'll just, oh, what's that expression again? Yeah, I'll just peel it off. That peel it off comes in handy. Glue on the table, peel it off. Glue on the back of your TV, peel it off. You got Plasti Dip on your computer and you don't like it, peel it off. Beautiful. Okay, it's not much to look at, but at least it it's gonna work. All right, I'm back. So my previous bottle here is clogged, so I'm not gonna be using that. I'm gonna be using uh, this bottle instead, which I filled up with a brand new bottle of adhesive. I decided to put gloves on because you guys didn't see it off camera, but I spilled some on my hand, a lot of it. This stuff contains chemicals that are both carcinogenic and teratogenic, so um, I'm not gonna do that anymore. But you have a question? I'm not dead. It just means yeah. that my children could be mutated. That's what teratogenic means. All right, so decided to switch camera angles. I think this is gonna be a little bit easier. So this stuff does kind of drip a little bit, not to worry because eventually this will dry and go away as you can see. Uh, from this one, from my test one, there's just a little bit of white cloudiness and there's some drips and some marks here that are eventually gonna become transparent. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move this one aside, start on the next one. This time I'm gonna try applying it to the base. I think this might be a more effective method. Certainly a cleaner one. I'm learning. All right, we'll go ahead and let this one dry after it sets. So it takes about one minute of working time. So you have about 60 seconds to move it around according to the instructions. And then after two minutes, wherever it is, that's pretty much where it's gonna stay. You've got about 120 seconds to figure out where it's gonna go. You might notice that I'm inspecting one of the sides of the tube with my fingers. I'm just checking to make sure that it's a smooth edge. This um, ad bonding adhesive will not work unless it's a smooth edge. That's what I'm checking for here. Just to make sure I don't need to sand it down. Okay, I like the technique that we used last time, so we're gonna try that one again. Also, I know it goes without saying, but try not to stab yourself with the needle, okay? The most common time that anybody will accidentally stab themselves is trying to recap the needles. And whatever was in that syringe is gonna be injected right into your blood. Okay, so while the tubes are drying, I'm gonna start making some of the wiring harnesses for these pumps. Um, now, I have 
a whole bunch of wiring here. I needed to get some of these three pin fan headers, um, but surprisingly, these are hard to find, especially at a local electronics store. So um, I'm just gonna cut them off of these wires. These are uh, fan connectors and I don't need them for anything right now. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut these off. Uh, the idea is that I wanna take the, the motor that I have here and so this one I uh, used in my example, it's already got a three pin connector to it. I wanna wire these two motors in what's called parallel wiring. So what that'll do is it'll allow the voltage to stay the same, but the current uh, required increases. So that means instead of wiring these in series where it goes positive, negative, and then the negative goes to the next positive, uh, positive connects to positive, negative connects to negative, and then these two leads are gonna connect to power. Uh, hopefully that all makes sense to you. All right, so we've got this case right here, uh, but we want to remove the PSU shroud so that we go ahead and mount the bumps. The bumps. Uh, we want to remove this so that we can mount the pumps to the bottom of the case. It's not a simple matter of removing screws. We end up having these uh, rivets in here. So these rivets are gonna have to come out somehow. The only way we're gonna be able to do that is by drilling it out. So there are two rivets here. There's a rivet here and here. It looks like even the hard drive shroud here um, is uh, riveted in. So we're gonna have to drill these rivets out. That's the only way. To complete the job, we're gonna be using a one millimeter drill bit. just pop right off. All right, well, instead we're gonna try a bigger drill bit. This one is a 332 inch. Uh, well, looks like the battery's dying, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the battery in the drill. No, I just hit the side of the case with the drill. So we got, uh, looks like two more rivets. We got one here and one here. The end of the rivet is actually caught on the drill bit. So I'm gonna have to get some pliers to try to pull this off. You would think that we got all of the rivets, but you would be wrong. There's still four rivets on the bottom. Now, that should be all of the rivets. Hopefully there's no more. I have to flex the case a little bit to get this out. Ah, there it goes, okay. All right, well there is the PSU shroud. It's now out, so I don't have to worry about this anymore. So we've got the hard drive hooked up, got a uh, keyboard and mouse here. We're gonna go ahead and install Windows on this machine. 
Thank you so much for checking out this video and if you enjoyed it, make sure you slap that like button below and share the video. And while you're at it, why not join the Modern Nation and get subscribed by clicking on that subscribe button below. And hey, when you do, don't forget to click on the bell icon inside the button to be notified the moment that I release new videos. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them for me in the comment section below or why not hit me up on social media, I'd love to hear from you guys. And when you buy products from Amazon, consider using the affiliate links in the video description below. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see ya!